YouTube, how's it going? It's me again, Dr. Ozzy. Today's video is very special and I think you guys will really like it. It's all about mastering. This is my mastering. This is what I think works best for me. Mastering is very subjective. A lot of people have differences and opinions and they have their own ways to master. There's people out there that use different hardware, different software. I use my own. And sometimes I may be doing things wrong, but that's what works for me as mastering. Now, again, I'm gonna repeat this in the beginning of the video and you're gonna hear me say it throughout the video. If your mix is Akuto, please bleep this. <laughs> I think I can say sh if your mix sucks and it's not doing what it's supposed to and it doesn't sound clean, your mastering is not going to help you. It's not a do all end all. It's just a place to make it louder. But anyways, this video is also a little bit long, so I don't want to take too much of your time. Subscribe, please. I will not shave my head. Don't f it'll bug me. I promise I will not unless it's like 50,000 subscribers. Maybe. But on that note, also press the notification bell. Make sure you like the video if you really enjoy it. This is my like this. I'm sharing this just just for the education purposes. And I, hopefully some people get something out of this. And hopefully you focus a little bit on making music rather than mastering. Anyways, keep making music. Be safe. I love you and uh, enjoy the video. I'll see you guys next time. Okay, before we do this though, okay, I want to I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. I want to make sure that everyone understands that this is preference. This is not the right way, nor this is the wrong way. Like I want to make sure no one is like taking this just but, but take take it by the grain of salt and took it take it to your own advantage rather than you know whatever it is. Anyways, I don't know what the f I'm saying at the moment. All right, uh, let's pull up a song. I'm gonna find a song that we can do. All right, I'm turning my master off. This is what the pre-master sounds like. All right, let's start from nothing. Okay, I said this in the beginning and I'm gonna say it again. This is my input. This is what I would do. This could be the wrong way, but this is my style and my master, the way I want to handle things. Let's listen to the whole th whole thing together. This is negative 20, as you can tell. Well, currently it's saying negative 15, but the perceived volume is negative 25-ish. I'm hitting about negative 21. Let's begin with the first thing. So I'm going to start off with EQ. I'm not cutting anything, but I'm not going to use that EQ. I'm going to use the fat filter. The only reason I'm using Pro-Q is because it gives, it allows me to be a little bit more surgical than most EQs. I'm going to go to the loudest part. So I have unwanted, I have unwanted frequencies at the bottom, but they're not as loud as they should be. But what, what, what's going to happen is when I do turn it up loud, it's going to come through a lot more. So I'm just doing that right off the bat. I don't want to, I don't want it in, in there. I'm just going to cut it instantly. To save my ass even more, I'm going to type in the number 3000 and I'm going to cut it very small, probably like negative 2 dBs and make the Q like a little tiny. And the last thing I would do is at about 18,000, I will do a another brick wall, actually probably at 20,000, covering my ass. I don't want anything in those areas to make my mix, well, my song muddy or even painful. Now, the further there is a little bit of high frequency that is going over a little bit and that's usually high hat so i'm gonna do a dynamic cut with with a bell so we maintain that high end just a little bit to hit a perfect zero i don't want to lose its you know character of the hi-hat the kick and snare are perfect they're right under the zero belly ish but they kind of come up every now and then yeah every now and then it comes up so i'm gonna do a little cue over there with a dynamic the mid-range i'm not too worried at the moment i may dynamic that a little bit let's do that one too because there's like a lot of frequencies around 1k and 1k is really Really bad in my books as well. I'm gonna take this down another two dBs, negative two. I'm gonna put it hard 1k. Perfect. So that's like what I would do ideally. Do some dynamic compressions and take out the harsh frequencies before I start gain staging. So that part is done. The next part that I would do is add a little bit of like, you know, 
saturation to give it more warmth but before that i would add a limiter so i would do a limiter and i would look for a strike in the ceiling whenever that strike happens i leave it there so notice how the gain reduction over here wherever it's limiting it will start peaking by like negative one or negative two dbs and that's I, that's when i'll call it a day so negative 15 is when i'm cutting the ceiling right there okay in stock stock limiter so negative 15 is where i'm just calling it a ceiling that's where i know my drums are sitting and that's how I lo how loud i want things to be all right so we've got a little bit of weird volume but like it it's still same like loudness so that's okay though that's fine we're working towards it so th this is doing a hard limiting ceiling is at negative 15 it will cut it off next i will do a stock eq because we're going to now gain stage even more because we cut everything at hard 15 i want to make sure well i mean this song probably doesn't need it see this is what i mean like this is that preference now what i want from it so right now i'm thinking I might need to EQ it again, but I don't know yet until I saturate it. So I need to saturate it right now. So I'm going to go to drive, saturate, and I'm going to do digital clip. It'll give a hard, soft clip at wherever I want to. But what I would do is I would drive it by 5 dBs, and then my output would be negative 5 dBs, and I leave it there. That's just like my preferred setting. I'll take color off just because sometimes it just does weird things. So now I have like limited the hard ceiling of the limiter. So nothing passes through almost. Now, the next stage I would do is another limiter. Now, this one is going to correspond what I did over here and do another ceiling limit of what I had previously kind of like sealing things off. And this is a limiter after the saturator. So I'm just finding where it would hit. We're still at 15, so we're good at the moment. So negative 15 is the cap at the moment. So I'm going to put a glue compressor, soft clip it, and then drive it by 10 dBs. So what this is going to do is going to make up gain 10 dBs from negative 15. So now we're getting a little bit louder this is when another limiter comes in and we do the ceiling cutoff so negative five is the hard limit right here so right now we have a limiter soft clipper and a soft clipper um threshold uh with the ratio 10 F it i don't care and then another limiter to soft uh, sorry to hard ceiling the the gain stage we just did now i'm gonna put a stock ableton eq because now i'm thinking those things that we cut out in the beginning need to be cut out again so i already have my eq saved as a preset at 3k uh 200 and my eighth one is cut at 20,000. so this is what i have saved as a preset and i will always like work with that around anyways most of my synth work and my sound designings whenever i upload things things are already cut at that area so i just i just do it in that order i think it's like easier for me to like cut things previously in the mix so my mastering is a little bit easier all right negative two dbs q like seven and i'm gonna add another one 1k and then dip negative of two seven q i think the track organically already has a lot of high-end shimmer. I don't really need to take out any of it because it's not clipping or distorting in the mix already. So we're we're kind of good in that area. Now the next thing I want to do, actually, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you decide. What's the next thing I want to do? Chat, go for it. Don't say limiter just because I'm using it a lot. But come on, you can do it. Reverb, <laughs> no. Ott, <laughs> clipper, glue compressor, compression, multiband, compress, sub. <laughs> All right, this is the juicy part that y'all will love, and I've been. Doing doing this but for this for my recent ones i actually i'm gonna cred um what's that puppet uh producer i forgot his name whole whole loops guy puppet y'all know who i'm talking about yeah re reads this Stefan. I mean, I'm going to cred another person a while ago I watched. Basically, frequency splitting. So I'm going to group this and do a frequency split. The usual and call it low. Oh, you can't type L's in there, which is a pretty big L. Low, mid, high. But there's another one. There's another one. Low plus mid. So I, I have been doing frequency split in my masters for quite a lot. But I never thought of adding a low plus mid in a master. So this is this is genius, if anything. Uh, I love this idea. So my low is 120. The song is in uh, D, I think. So 33 hertz. I'm going to take my low end and put it to about 90 and turn off all of them. High uh, and mid. Low mid, 90 to about 900. Mid, 900 to 4,000. Actually, we should probably round. Yeah, 15 is enough. 15,000 here as well. Okay, low mid. Uh, we're going to take that out. Put it over there. And 90 to 900. Okay, low. Yeah, probably change these two. Oh, 915. All right. Did I get them all right? I don't know. Eh, eh, mid. Hi. We f***ed up, didn't we? I think I f***ed up. Let's just do it the way I do it. Okay? Let's not add the low mid. F*** it. <laughs> I did it before, but let's just go with what I know rather than adding. <laughs> 
let's just let's just frequency split this way all right what do we do here i really f***ed up this one let's start over okay low oh my god low mid high there you go Okay, uh, I, I'm such an idiot. Oh my god. Solo, solo, solo. Wait, where does the mid end at? 120? I think I need to cut it even more. I think that 4,000 mark was good. I'm gonna put it to 4,000 again. 100. Perfect. Okay, so now my focus is in each band at the moment, okay? So I'm gonna take this out and I'm going to macro these. So I'm gonna map the low amount. Let's just name them first. Low amount, mid amount, high amount. And then I'm gonna do thresholds and name it low thresh mid thresh and then high oh my god work with me thresh and color them i have each frequency dedicated to just compression let's start with amount so let's map that map uh, what do we are at? high so we're gonna map that to high we can just right click it to be honest mid amount and low amount and then high okay so when you go to these little buttons at the bottom in a above this is the compression and then you put that in high thresh and mid thresh and then low oh wait let's drop again mid low mid oh sorry low all right we have of everything so my threshold right now is at negative 20 it's set there at negative 20 each one of them should be at negative 20 can someone tell me why it's at negative 20 if you watch my streams and when i start making music do you know exactly why it's already set at negative 20 it's a hard question it's kind of a trick question mic is loud no compared to the mix right now to that and this you know no that's because everything i do is already set to negative 20 if you look behind the dollar sign why are you doing that why is this light doing that constantly Anyways, so when I make my songs, they're already set at negative 20. That's what I do typically. So I'll, I'll keep them at negative 20. So when I when I looked at multiband, the moment when I do turn turn on, it's it as stock already. Multiband kind of does it at negative 20, um, just to like set it. So I was like, there has to be a reason, uh, or like to my understanding, when I saw this for the first time, I was like, well, let me start mixing my sh at negative 20. Why do I have my mixes so low? Uh, well, because when I do negative 20 and start building my my sound design around negative 20 it hits a perfect negative six every single time and i i explained that in my youtube video that is actually i explained recently so you you can watch that video and see why i do negative 20 i just farted okay so just comparing because i usually it, there's no right or wrong way you can do it at negative 10 and feel comfortable with it you know you can still do negative 10 and work your way around it to have a perfect negative six it's it, it, like i said mixing is a style when it comes to edm you know so do it with your own style i think mastering is also like part of your style you know okay so what we're gonna do for each bands here low mid and high is that each band right now is sitting at negative 20 and i'm gonna hard compress them each one of them i've set them to literally brick wall at negative 20 okay so if you listen to it right now it sounds very compressed so we hard limited it uh compressed it uh at low and mid and highs so what we're going to do in here we're gonna go in low and we're going to go put it up low threshold about negative 15 and then we're going to put an eq weight right after it and cut out any harsh frequencies that are bothersome above it so we get just the low frequencies and that's all all right continuing mids and i'm gonna put another an eq right after it check out what it's really doing that's really squashed so i'm gonna threshold it up a little bit i just want that snare to be controlled perfect eq and i'm gonna cut it out right before the initial sound and the 20k about 10k right and now i'm gonna go into my highs the highs seem fine i'm gonna pull it back a little bit just to keep it leveled and i put an eq in there you guessed it and then i'm going to cut it out perfect and i'm going to do the same thing over here i'm going to put instead of a 48 i'm going to do a 28 so there's a good crossover between them between all of them oh and i'm going to do the same thing with this one 28 <laughs> So all the frequency bands should be kind of like cut neatly and should have a well-rounded like sound to all of them. If I take it off, there shouldn't be much of a difference. You can hear the spikes just in general when you listen to it. But when you turn this on, they're more tamed and managed. So without, with, without, with.
Now, at some point, you're going to say it's too squashed, it's too much, and now this is where the parallel compression comes in. I'm going to turn all of these, the amount, high, mid, and everything, and put it into 50, because we squashed the living shit out of them, and I want to make them parallel. There you go. And that's just my weird technique. So now, this is where another thing comes in, and if chat can help me out, what am I going to do next? This is pretty much the last stage. Anyways, what do you think I'm going to do? Form of limiter? Yeah, you guessed it. Limiter. Now, I'm going to limit a little bit more than usual. But this limiter is going to go hand in hand with Prowell. The reason being because there is a really good audio, audio, no, sorry. There's a really good visual of what is happening with my previous limiter when I do gain stage. This is the last step. This is what I would do. Sometimes all the other things that I have done won't even be a thing. It will be just these two. Okay. So right here, I will listen to my song. Everything seems a really nice, like controlled sound, but I want you guys to pay attention to something a little a little bit more important when we listen to this drop the loudest part of the whole song i want you guys to look at the meter okay this meter right here on the right after all that we have done okay <laughs> So what do you guys notice right now? There is a well f***ing perfect negative 4 dBs of headroom. After all the all the limitation, saturation, a little bit of like parallel compression, plus on top of that, like multiband compression, we finally have a perfect negative 4. And that's like the ideal goal of mastering now. So what I'm going to do is create this and put it to negative 5, the ceiling, the previous limiter, the stock. And then this is where I'm going to go. And I think... We can go even lower. I can. I think we can go to negative 10. That's a little too much. <laughs> Let's go to negative 8. So like a double of what we were hitting in our negative 4 dB. So now you can tell visually that there's a hard ceiling. Right there. And if I put this, it goes up to negative 7. And I'm going to cut it even more, negative 8.20, cut it even more, give it more ceiling. Okay, so now this is it. This is pretty much the last step. Whatever what, whatever number you have inputted in your previous limiter as a ceiling, as a hard cutoff, that's the number that is going to be staged, gain staged into the next limiter. Right here, I would type in 8.40. That's it. Okay, I'm going to group these in a way. So I'm going to group this and I'm going to call it rename this group, please. Why can't I rename this group? Huh? Why can't I rename it? I have to save it. That's kind of weird. Anyways. Oh, that's the gain staging group. <laughs> that is the multiband parallel. And then I think we should parallel this too. Good. 50%. Cut it to negative 10. Even further, negative 15. That's too much. Negative 12. Then we go up 12. Now, the thing is, sometimes I would listen to this and I'm just like, I don't think this is it. So what I would do is this right here is I'll put a multiband right off of the gain stage. Now, what, what multiband will do is add its own gain on it. Listen to it. It does some fuckery, but I'm so not happy with, you know, the typical hards. Hard zero. It goes up to two a little bit. So I, I, I f around a little bit. This is where I would do dumb sh I'll put, I'll crank it five on the output. <laughs> yeah. I do everything in the beginning as traditionally as possible, you know? I'll be like, tradition, 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 gain stage tradition, and then I will just go, oop, 5 dBs, control all of them to taste, and that's it. <laughs> Actually, that's lie. My input would go negative 10, and so would be my mid. My input for my highs, and oh my god, stop it. Anyways, negative 10, negative 10, plus 10, plus 10, everything. And then I'll, then I'll to do taste. 
Now, the thing is that, like, this is not necessary. You know what I mean? You don't have to do this, but this is the style that I had created for myself. I could also f with, like, a little bit of uh, the amount. Just to give it, like, a little bit more of a saturated, clipped sound. But, like, that's what I kind of, like, came up with, you know? Where I'm thinking, this needs a little bit of warmth. This needs, like, I'm thinking of it like a sound. The band Black Keys, like, you know, they will be... Their, their sound reflects in the master as well. So, what I'm explaining is just pretty much, like, what... I think sounds good and what I think should be like I feel like mastering to me is limiting but this style requires you to be energetic and loud and saturated and kind of like playing with clipping so that's where I stand with like dubstep and mastering I feel like mastering for pop mastering for rock mastering for um like hip-hop even any other genre they're all to taste and to consider as like their own sound you know and I think that's that's how like mastering should be taken as like your sound this is your final product that you have accomplished and only you know how to you know you know how to like create it and i i think i think it only comes with practice to try to make it sound good constantly but you don't this is my you could you could take this and un, and apply it on your own mastering and try to understand how to further like make your s song sound better i guess but in no way or shape or form i think you should pay attention i know people who work with loudness luffs um um, at negative one and Grixis Mumbai power was at negative three you know I'm hitting negative five right now and sometimes that's not even enough I will crank it even more if I wanted to you know so it's really to taste there's no like secret sauce to mastering but this is what I use and I just shared it to you guys like no tomorrow <laughs>